a lot of those early silent films that that Cheney did um, really, I mean, especially Phantom of the Opera, they kind of really inform where the Universal Monster Legacy was going. These sympathetic but you know dangerous characters. Lo and behold, the prodigal son returns. From Hidden Gems to to the quintessential Universal movies, a lot of people, there might be people who watch this and have, have heard of it, but haven't gone in, you know, and sort of, you know, bitten into the flesh of the Universal monster movies. So what would your five quintessential, tough question, but what are your five quintessential Universal monster movies? Yeah, my answer would be, so you want to watch like all 35 of these movies, <laughs> but if I have to bring it down to five i think you gotta go dracula you gotta go you see i'll 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 cut out frankenstein just because i think bride of frankenstein is a better film not to not to lower that movie in any way but i think bride of frankenstein is a little bit more important so you go dracula bride of frankenstein the wolfman house of frankenstein and Creature from the Black Lagoon. And I say those movies, not necessarily because they're all my favorites, like my personal favorites, but I think that gives you the the whole range of where these movies went from like the early beginnings to how they transformed through the decades. So I think watching those five films gives you the whole history of Universal Monsters, like in a five hour sitting because these movies are barely like an hour and yeah. 10 minutes. Uh, so it, it's definitely the, those five. I think that um, what, well, you know, what you say of it, um, those five movies sort of representing the journey through the universal monster sort of archive is the, the story of the universal monster movies is summed up very nicely in those five movies. You know, I would, I would also go, uh, Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman. Then, you know, I, I think I would also put Phantom of the Opera in there. I don't know. I That's what I was kind of having trouble with. It's like, yeah, I you you kind of I got to start with Dracula. Bride of Frankenstein feels like if I don't put it on the list, it's it's a sin kind of thing. Yeah. Um, House of Frankenstein really gets into those forty. It, it it basically encapsulates the whole forties and like what was going on at that time, mm. that energy of like those big comic booky plots and stuff. Uh, and the creature just brings you into the atomic age, essentially yeah. where the universal goes after the success of these characters. Uh, but with phantom, I was like, like you kind of need that in there too, because mm. a lot of those early silent films that, that Cheney did uh, really, I mean, especially Phantom of the Opera, they kind of really inform where the Universal Monster Legacy was going. These sympathetic but, you know, dangerous characters. Absolutely. Uh, unhinged but tragic at the same time, yeah. We can look back at these older movies and we can love them for what they are. And I think that they're always going to be referenced in some way. You know, it's funny, we were talking about the Wolfman remake. I, I think that the Wolfman remake kind of references the Wolfman, of course, but it also references, you know, Werewolf of London with the feral child scene, at least I think so. Um, it, it kind of plays with a few of of, of those movies. But do you think that there's a, um, <clears throat> a contemporary filmmaker making movies today, set today, that kind of um, homages, that is sort of a, a reincarnation, if you will, of... Uh, the universal movies uh, it's very hard to mm. to say it's such a unique time in in horror it's like you look at those movies and we've really had trouble replicating that in, in any way like it's always been well if you want to see something like the universal monster movies it's like you got to just go back mm. and kind of watch those movies but I think the closest as far as like a filmmaker that I think really brings that and we mentioned them before with like a wink to it but also same thematically is 
probably Guillermo del Toro yeah. of like creating the monsters that are tragic, that are sympathetic, that are, you know, shaped by their society. It's not exactly that they are born these monsters. It's not their choice. A lot of the times it's just what society has turned them into. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that Guillermo del Toro is one of the filmmakers today that really has implemented that kind of lore or like original context into these characters of yes we can be scared of them but they are also very tragic and you know they suffer as much as anybody no, no matter how they look um and i think that's just because Guillermo del Toro is a big monster kid and he understands these these characters through and through but but I don't I I honestly don't see and I think it's just because what we talked about it's not they're they're making so they're making different movies than what these characters were that it's like I don't really see someone who's bringing that aspect back into it uh, like again aside from Guillermo del Toro Hmm. Like it, it is, it is, it, and it's not an easy thing to replicate. It's not, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's just like it, it was a thing of its time, and maybe it can't be replicated. But, but, but there, I think there's people that are trying. Hmm. But I think Guillermo del Toro it, is that guy. Yeah, you certainly get the sense that Guillermo del Toro, if he were ever to go out and remake one of those movies, he would he would do it justice you know he, he he seems like he'd be the material would be perfect in his hands i think tim burton is probably also another one that could possibly you know do the same thing i think that he's got the right sort of approach if you look at what he did with batman in terms of adapting something for cin cinema i think that he'd be able to if left if left alone you know if, if people don't start if the studios don't start tampering with him he would probably be able to go back and and make those do those movies justice of course again you know would it would it be would it be a homage to the to the universal movies or would it actually be a, an updating of it i think that would be the big question but I, yeah i think i think those two i was going to i was going to mention rob zombie i think that rob zombie sort of has something although you could also argue that he kind of you know it, it's the exploitation movies that he's really into and the the slasher movies yeah. and stuff but you're right i mean i think that you hit the nail on the head too by saying that uh it's uh, those movies are actually very difficult to 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 redo unlike the slasher movies that we we often get these reimaginings of the you know the 80s slasher movies and they kind of work pretty well but um the universal movies especially from the golden age that those sort of 30s and 40s that's that's a tough act to follow and um be interesting to see what they do with some of these uh possible upcoming remakes you know yeah it's it, i even think maybe one of the recent successes i was watching it last night and that's why I, I really thought about it now is uh, the Disney Plus is uh, the Werewolf by Night. I actually think ah. captures a lot of like the 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 classic Universal style. And and sure, it's because it's doing the atmosphere. It's doing you know it has the film grain and all that. They they do try to aesthetically make it look like it. But that move that little fifty minutes has it's almost as long as an actual Universal monster movie and. It, it does have like the sympathetic monsters so i i think that was actually a, a more you know faithful adaptation of these characters that have been done in in a long time Gaze into the abyss. Ah.